Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and today's video is going to be a Q&A because I think like um, oh, five days ago I asked you guys if you had any questions to do with uni, to do with student life, engineering or just any questions, period. And I got like so many questions so I feel like this Q&A could either be one long or two split into two parts. Probably two split into two parts because I hate watching long videos and filming long videos. Anyways, let's start with the Q&A. Let's cue the intro first. Oh la la. <laughs> okay, so there's no order. I like just gonna read it off my phone. <laughs> First question is, do you do your own hair at university? Okay, before um, this whole lockdown thing, I didn't do my own own hair in uni. I would go to, I would travel from Southampton to London to get my braids done or like whatever hairstyle I was gonna get. But now I've started doing my own hair. Like I did this like red goddess braids by myself and all the other hairs I've had during lockdown I've done myself. I think the minute I get back to uni, I'll be doing my own hairs. Um, yeah. But like, if you want to, there's people at Southampton around the area that can do hair for you. Just, um, just have to find them and pay the money. Okay, another question is, um, how do you make friends in university and how do you balance school life and nights out? Okay, making friends at university is actually easier than I thought because I know all of us before coming to uni I was just incredibly terrified about the fact that I might not have any friends, people might not like me, my personality, blah, blah, blah. but like honestly everyone's in the same boat. Everything you're thinking, a thousand more students are thinking the same thing. So like everyone's out to make friends unless you give them a reason not to be friends with you, trust me. It's, it's not as hard as you think. Just join societies. Your course mates are one, your first friend. Um, your housemates, your flatmates, that's your next group of friends. And then when, if you go out on a night out, trust me, everyone's all friendly and like everyone just wants to make friends because everyone's in the same boat of, oh, I don't have friends and I'm scared of like university life so far. Um, so I would say it's, it's easy. It's not as hard as you think to, is, to make friends. So join societies, your course mates, your flatmates or housemates or whoever you're sharing your accommodation with. And then how do you balance school nights life, school life and nights out? Just briefly I'll summarize this that it's important to plan and to organize, okay? Say I have five lectures on a Friday and I know I finish at 5 p.m. That means I have to do all my work beforehand because if I want to go out on a night on Friday, that means I have to finish that tutorial question, those five questions I had from like my hydraulics lecture before Friday because I know if I try to do it 5 p.m. after a lecture I'll be tired my work uh, my concentration levels won't be as high and like the work I produce won't be up to the standards I think it's acceptable so you do it beforehand you just have to plan and organize if you want more detail like you can message me um, whoever um, asks, asks this question and I will tell you but I like, definitely plan things on Excel even like checklists, checklists are so good because you're mentally, you're not mentally, you're physically ticking off so you can physically see what you've done and what's left to do. So I always use checklists. I might do a whole video on like how I organize my time at uni. Okay? Have you applied to, to be an IC student and do you recommend doing this in first year? Yeah, I do think you should apply to be an IC stands for Institution of Civil Engineering by the way. Um, um, yeah, did you have a student mentorship for undergraduate and the minute you start your first year degree you can apply and this is important because while well, you really want to stay in tune with what your board is saying like if you ever want to become a civil engineer a chartered civil engineer then these are the people that will help you do that well these are the people that can only get you chartered by the way um so like if you sign up to the membership it keeps you up to date with like any like major updates or changes any like meetings presentations and talks i have in london or where else over in the uk um resources they think that might be useful any major civil engineering projects or structures that like have a major development like HS2 or anything they'll like I get I get like <laughs> weekly updates from these people and you know I do read my majority of them not related but would you do would you be doing more study content next year um yeah next year I'm in third year so hopefully I can do more study content because the only reason I didn't do that much well as much as I thought I was going to do in second year is because um my editing software was so rubbish or one or like it was just so slow on this particular laptop but now I've changed stuff and it's much easier. I've got a new phone, new setup. Like I know what I'm doing now. Um, the only reason I wouldn't film during third year is that I'm finding it incredibly hard. And I hope that's not the case. First question okay. is, what was the jump from sixth form to year one like? Oh, so what content did you study? Okay, so I can say the jump from like sixth form, year 13 to first year was not as big as I imagined in like workload wise, like academic wise, 
but everything but like everything else i would say was big the biggest jump was like coming to realize coming to realization that oh i have to fend not fend for myself but like if i don't cook there won't be food if i don't budget i might run out of money if i don't keep my keys together i won't get in like the, everything's on you you're independent this is your own way of living like trust me it will hit you like a storm when you come back from like a long nine to five lecture like a long nine to five day and just doing loads of lectures and tutorial to come back and realize oh, i didn't do grocery shopping that means i won't have anything to eat that just like i had to like just keep remembering oh my gosh my mom's not gonna cook me food or like you need to do grocery shopping veggie unless you're just not gonna eat all of that so i was like raw okay i need to get my i need to get my stuff together because like this is really happening that was the, the biggest job academic wise if like I did, I went to sixth form and I did A-levels and like A-levels were already like tough, like physics, I did maths, physics and product design, they were really tough content wise and had loads of resources and things I had to do, it's just like university, the only issue is that university you don't have like the comfort or the safety bank and knowing that your teachers won't let you fail because like it's on them, where at university they have like 90 to 100 people they have to all take care of, care. while my physics class was only like 15, 11 of us, so I'm just saying like at university there's more everything's more on you like if you don't want to do those tutorial questions then that's on you and like the like the lecturer is not going to pull up at your doorstep or pull up in the lecture saying why haven't you done this because one they don't care and i have like many 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 other students to look after so that's why i'd say like the biggest thing to come to like you're basically fending for yourself in like majority of things i mean obviously the support like university support friendship support but yeah Okay, a question is how to prepare for first year of civil engineering? What A-level topics did you revise? Why do we need any useful resources that can help you get a step ahead? Okay, I think I put a video on this. Um, if you watch my summer preparation for engineering, I put a video on things that you could do, such as um, reading up on your modules. If you want any adv like advanced reading or things you can read up ahead before your um, your first year, they have it on the module thing. You read it. There's a bit called additional resources, and if you want to buy these books, buy it. Like first year. There was this book called Modern Engineering. Um, I'll link it down below of what we used for first year engineering for all for mathematics and also across there was second year engineering. Stuff like that, um, what A-level topics to revise. I'll definitely say just reviewed all of maths A-level. Like, I know that seems like a lot, but like once you learn something, you can't unlearn it, so like just revise it. And then uh, any other useful resources, I'll definitely say look at the Institution of Civil Engineering, which is our, um, the institute that controls like civil engineering. Like, if you want to get accredited, there are people. Anyways, they're just on board. So like, if you want to get become chartered, you need to get accredited by them. So like, they do student memberships, which is free. So I would advise to get them first year. No one really tells you to get it, but like, get it. Because they give you like resources, emails, talks, presentations, meetings, all of that. If you want more information, Amy Lauren, then just message me and I'll give you more. Because people have DM'd me about this. And I think I might just make another video. Because I keep saying the same thing, but I'm happy to help. What uh, sh should a student do in the summer vacation in order to be a little bit more prepared for second year? Like, would you go back in first year? Like, what would you do to go back? Oh, okay, I see what she means. Like, what would I have done in first year summer now that I've done second year? Um, well, to be honest, second year is a lot harder than first year. But there's not... The thing is, there isn't topics that linked from first year that I could revise to help second year easier. Like, there were brand new topics like hydraulics. and so Hydraulics was brand new. Um, soil mechanics wasn't brand new but like most of it was but we did a little bit in first year so um to be honest if you really have the time and you're really prepared you could always just look over look at the modules in second year beforehand or if, since you're first year find someone who's a year above you or two years above you who's just like above you in this degree and ask them for their notes or just ask them what they found difficult because that's what i did i knew that structural analysis no Structural design was one of the hardest modules in second year. So I asked the fourth year student if he could tell me what was hard, why did people fail this? Also maths in second year is like a lot harder than maths in first year. So I took the time over the summer to re like consolidate my maths learning I did in first year and make sure I was prepared to do maths in second year. And I'm really glad I did that because I got, I'm proud of my maths grade. And um, a lot of people did find maths hard. And I'm saying maths and structural analysis were the two main modules people failed. This is just off my head of me asking people, but like, I don't know. Just, but yeah, I'll definitely say look, ask people a, a year above you for help. Um, go on the university le uh, website, they'll always tell you what your modules are every year and like the lecturers linked to that. You can even email the lecturers asking them if they have, 
it would help particular book because I bought the book before even starting the module. Okay, what would you do? Would you do an applying applying for internship series like right before September? Obviously, you may have planned your content already. Blah blah blah. Oh, okay. She's asking if I would do it like a. Uh, internship series i did i do have a video already about like some internships on placements because i actually do have a summer placement that's starting like four days um i'll link it up but if you want me to go into more detail like short internships and placements are such a big deal for practical based degrees because you really want to get like that experience to put you that one one step ahead of people because I could come up with a first class, this girl could come up with a first class, but like what's going to differentiate from these two first class is the fact that I might have two years experience and she might have none. So like, like it's a competitive in industry, like you just want, you, you always just want to strive for the best and if getting experience or getting a placement means you can be best, then do that. But I will make a series if I do have time, um, yeah. This is going to be a lengthy question, how do you budget, how to budget in university if you do budget? And does your budget change each year after year? Like, did it change when you went to second year? Okay, Te I'm, I'm actually one of the worst person to ask about budgeting at like, university. So I'll answer the second part of the question. Does your budget change year after year? It does, because things change. Like first year, for example, I would say in total things were cheaper. No, accommodation wise, things were cheaper because like bills were included. Um, it was just like three installments I had to pay every year. Um, in the year but with house with like a house right now your bills are included so we have to start the bills separately and obviously it's not a fixed amount because depending on how much you spend depends on how much bills you have to accumulate and so like i would say it definitely does change year on year year in and year out so like listen i'm so bad at what you're saying i wanted to give you more advice but like i haven't figured out myself yet so yeah i think that's all the questions i'm going to answer today for the people who have, I haven't answered your questions, I'm gonna do another Q and A where I can address all of this, or I could just, um, I'll just message you, like actually type out rather than filming a video. It depends like my time constraint. But like, I hope this Q and A has been informative. Thank you so much for watching, and have a good day. Bye.